Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be reviewing Bloodborne because I have just finished my first playthrough of it around two days ago and you guys saw that in my most recent stream. Now in this video I'm going to be going over locations and bosses that I really enjoyed in the game. First of all we're going to be talking about your starting area which is Yosefka's clinic and how you got the blood transfusion. Uh, I think it's a really cool idea that you become a hunter uh, on the night of the hunt and you come to Yarnum and that is the next place which is central Yarnum there's all those townspeople that are turning into beasts and they're all around that big wolf in the middle sadly I do not have footage of all this you're just gonna be watching this Garman fight from the stream and uh, the next place is Old Yarnum, which I believe is the place with the hunter uh, with the Gatling gun on top of the building. Uh, I really liked uh, finding a way around him to be able to get up to him and kill him. But enough for areas for now. Let's talk about the, the Cleric Beast for now. Um, I killed this boss on my first attempt, so I don't have a whole ton to talk about it. Uh... uh next boss we are going to talk about is Father Gascoigne, and I really love this fight. Uh, so just something about two hunters going at it, and uh, him turning into a werewolf in the second phase, and uh, the lore behind him uh, going crazy, killing his wife, and abandoning his daughters, and when you use the music box in the fight, it makes him remember his family, and makes him sad and stuff, but um, the next place, I believe, is, actually, I don't, you go to the, the church, and you then go to Vicar Amelia, which, Vicar Amelia is another great boss, I think she's one of my favorites in the game, but I beat this boss in about five or six attempts, it was, it was pretty dang hard, um, I don't know much lore behind her, but other than it was just a great boss, I really loved it. Now, the Forbidden Woods. I freaking hated this area. Giant snakes everywhere, little snakes everywhere, snake humanoids everywhere, just getting poisoned everywhere. It was just a horrible place. It's like the Farron Keep of Dark Souls 3. But, the boss in that area, you guys know, I've beat the shadows of Yarnum on my first ever try and I've heard that people struggle with that boss and um that was a really great boss I love the design and look of them I love the movesets and such um the blood starved beast I skipped that the blood starved beast I had a little bit of trouble with it took me like five or six attempts as well uh, and how you get poisoned in that. I really liked the, the music and the sound. The sound of the boss in that boss fight. But the look. The look could have uh, been less disgusting. I guess you could say. But uh, moving on. Uh, after the shadows. You get to Rom. I don't really have anything to say about the area before that. Uh, other than I guess it was okay. Um, but Rom. Rom was, I had a, like a lot of trouble with him because I was getting one hit combo by those spiders and um, it was just not great. I had to take a day off of it because he was uh, making me mad, but eventually I did beat him and uh, I guess that boss is alright though, other than Rom doesn't really do much except shoot that, uh, I assume it's webs or something, but... That's all he really does, and then roll around. It's really the spiders that are really issue in the fight, so I guess it was alright fight. But after Rom is, uh, I believe, the uh, witches. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this boss is freaking annoying and not even a challenge at all. You just run around the boss room trying to find her while she's invisible, while avoiding those other enemies. I think that's my worst hated boss in the game, so I really have nothing else to say about it. Uh, I believe after the Witch of Hemwick, you can go to Kanehurst. And Kanehurst was one of my favorite places in the games. I love snow areas in the Souls games. They're just freaking great. 
the enemies I could say less about because the wax ghost ladies were just everywhere and they were slow, easy to kill. Uh, so I guess it was, it, I just really liked the look of it. The enemies were alright, and then Marta Ligarius, I have something else to say about. He's one of my favorites in the game as well. Uh, his arcane, I had to, it took me a little while to learn, to learn it, to be able to dodge it and stuff like that. But, um, he, I think I had the most trouble with him in the game. Um, besides Garman, Garman gave me a little bit of trouble. Um, he's an alright boss, he's okay, but after that, it is Yahargal. This is the area I had the worst time with, um, because there are so many enemies, they did so much damage to me, that area with the three hunters, they ganged up on you, I had to get help from a friend on that one, that's like the only area I got to help with. Uh, I did the rest of it solo. And then the the one reborn, that was the most pushover boss I've ever done. You just go up and kill the ladies that are shooting stuff at you, go down to him and wreck his face, and that's legitimately it. And it's not appealing to look at either. I don't have much to say about the music either. Um, the lecture building with all the puddle dudes, uh, they were kind of annoying because they could literally stretch and kill you. They're like throwing crap at you. It's just annoying. But the Nightmare Frontier... This area, this area looked really cool in my opinion, but uh, I never really like poison areas where you have to go through like swamps and stuff and it poisons you and kill enemies at the same time. While well, giant dudes are throwing rocks at you, I mean it's just, it's just okay I guess, but. Then you get to Amygdala, I beat Amygdala on my third try with four Estus flasks. I went into the boss fight with four Estus flasks and then beat it. I it was so dang cautious, but. I didn't find that boss too hard either, although although I really liked it. I really liked the music, I really liked the boss arena, it was just great. And then, I hope I'm not skipping any. Uh, let's see. I really at Mikolosh already? Oh yeah, Dark Beast Parl. I actually skipped this boss. I fought it once, but then I heard it was optional, and then I just continued and it didn't really go back to it. It killed me, but... Uh... There definitely has to be more stuff than this. Okay, I believe the area next is the Nightmare Mensis, the area before Mikolaj. This place was freaking annoying as well with that giant light shining down on you and constantly taking health down from you. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did what most people do and just ran past all that. And then you get into the room with all the giant spiders and then the really big spider. I handled that pretty well. Uh, there always has to be some sort of spider enemy in a Dark Souls game, doesn't there? But... Uh, after all that is Mikolosh, and uh, I actually really enjoyed his fight. I really like the character in general. He just sounds hilarious, and uh, I didn't have trouble with him, except in the second phase, his, I think the, I believe the arcane spell is called Call Beyond, where he, like, claps his, hair in the, his hands in the air, and then all these spells come out. That would, like, one-hit me almost every time, but I think I beat this boss on, like, my fourth or fifth try, but it... I will say what's annoying is him running around and trying to get him to go into the room, but it's alright. After Mikolosh is uh, Murgo's Wet Nurse, but let's talk about the area after Mikolosh. Uh, I think it's just still the Nightmare Mensis, and you just have to go past uh, those Shadows of Yarnum guys, and then like three pigs. So that's all I have to say about that. And then Murgo's Wet Nurse. I beat this boss on my first try, I didn't find her difficult at all. Just while she's like slashing her swords and stuff, you go up behind her and punish. Um, and then, after Murgo's Wet Nurse, we have Garamond, like the gameplay you're seeing in the background. I don't believe I'm missing any that I can think of. But, anyways, we have Garamond, which this is my favorite boss in the game so far. It was just freaking amazing. Hit the the I think that's like the best soundtrack in the game, uh, besides the uh, Hunter's Dream, which we're going to talk about. But Garman, his boss fight is amazing. Uh, his move set is awesome. I don't really like his sock, his uh, shorter version of his uh, scythe because <laughs> I would just get spammed with it. As you guys can see, I'm getting sort of my butt kicked. But I did beat him, and it was great. I loved the fight.
Next, I got the Moon Presence, which you have to get the umbilical cords for that. And, um... I think this was my second favorite boss in the game, because the design is just amazing. I freaking love it. His, uh... His one-shot move where it gets you down to, like, one health and then he sits there. I like it, but I don't like it because he can make it so you can't heal and it's kind of cheap. But I love it nonetheless. Um, Alright, that is most of what I have to talk about. Before the video ends, I'm going to make a couple of announcements. First of all, I'm going to... My second channel is going to become my streaming channel because I've started streaming a lot and I don't want my main channel to become crowded by stream videos. So head over to my second channel. That is now going to be my streaming channel and I will be streaming... Uh, I don't think there's going to be a schedule. It's just going to be whatever really I feel like it. And um, what the first series that's going to be streamed over there is the DLC because I did not do anything from the DLC and I hope I will see you guys in those streams. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Bloodborne. Uh, and yeah, I got really nothing else to say. I'll catch you guys in the next one.